Hello and welcome to Code Slicing. I'm Adam, lifelong coder and creator of Pure Swift UI. This is part two of an exciting two-part series where we are recreating the animations from my fitness pal. Specifically the one where you add stuff to your diary and all the buttons fly out and everything. It looks amazing. In part one, we laid the groundwork. We built the things we're going to be animating. So if you care about that, go and check it out. If you don't care about that and you just want to get on with the good stuff, well, you've come to the right place because we are going to move things around and whiz them about and blow people's minds because they can't believe what they're seeing. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, stick around because it's going to be great. Right, here we are where we left off in part one and we're going to get things moving. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is replace our button with a circle. Now, the reason I'm going to do that is because there is a bug in Xcode at the moment, which was introduced, I think, in 11.4. Hasn't worked since 11.3 and is still not working in 11.5 beta 1, which is that if you are trying to offset something, which is a custom view inside a for each block, it will not work in the internal simulator. It will work fine in the external simulator. It will work on the device, but it will not work here. So in order for us to actually see what we're doing, I'm going to define a circle that we can work on. And then once we've got our animations the way we want them, I will basically shove in our button with those animations in place and it will all be fine. Don't worry, but I'm going to define it like this. I'm going to say, Here's my circle with a frame of 50. And I'm going to fill it with white. And then I'm going to comment these out. So if we resume now, we should see the same thing, but just circles. Perfect. Now, in order to get this working, we need to do two things. We need to determine the position of the add button and once we've got that, we need to move the other buttons to that location when they're not showing. So this approach is really beneficial because you can focus entirely on the design of how the buttons are going to look when they're showing, like we've done here, and we're going to animate them away from that position when they're not showing, as in, in the off state, rather than starting from them all being mashed up behind the plus button and then animating them to our design. Fortunately, there are a couple of modifiers in Pure Swift UI that are going to make this process very easy indeed. The first one we're going to look at right now because we need to find out the position of that add button. And we do that using the geometry reader modifier, like this. We say geometry reader, which takes a geo proxy in the callback there. You can see the implementation right there. It's just a thin wrapper around a geometry reader that is inside an overlay. And the reason that's important is that it means we can get this geometry information without affecting the layout. Now, if you put a geometry reader around this view, it could affect the layout because a geometry reader is a greedy view. It likes to take all the space it can, whereas text, for example, doesn't. So if you put a text view inside a geometry reader, it would mess up your layout. So by using it like this, you don't run that risk. So now that we know that, we're going to get the home location, but we need a home location to set to. So we're going to define a state variable called home location of type CG point, and we're going to initialize it to zero. So now once this callback is fired, we can set the home location to its center within the global coordinate space like this, global center. So now that we have our home location, we're halfway there. All we've got to do is animate the buttons to that location when they're not showing. And we do that with the second modifier I was talking about, and that is the offset to position modifier. So with that modifier, you can move things all over the screen, wherever you like, without affecting your design or original layout or anything. Now we're going to use a conditional version of this modifier, but for every condition, you need a Boolean. So we're going to define one of those to determine if the buttons are showing or not. And we're going to call that showing buttons. 
and we're going to set it to true because we want to see what we're doing for now. And we'll reset that to false, if I remember. No promises. But now we know whether we're showing the buttons or not. And we're going to use the modifier like this. Offset to position, if not, showing buttons and the place we want them to go is the home location. So as long as we're toggling that condition, that's enough to actually get them there. Because internally, it's a little more complicated, so I can't just shove the implementation on the screen for you, but I do encourage you to check it out because you will find it interesting. Well, you might find it interesting. I'm not, I mean, you might not. And, and what it does is it wraps a geometry reader in the same way that the modifier works down there. And it knows its location. It knows where you want to put it. It takes the difference and offsets it by that amount. And at this point, we just need to toggle that Boolean. We can do that on the add button like this. Tap, gesture, and we say showing buttons is whatever it wasn't. And if I resume that, and I play, then I think, there they go. Look at that. You click it and they're hiding behind that button. Fantastic. Now I admit it's not the best animation in the world. So we're going to fix that right now. So in the application, there are two animations to this. There's one that sends them out and there's one that hides them. They are two different animations. The one that shows them is a spring animation and the one that hides them, I think is just an ease animation. It looks like it to me. I could be wrong, but it looks like an ease out. They immediately shoot from the out position. So let's define two animations like this. Right, so we're gonna say the hide animation is an ease out. I think, and I'm going to set it with a duration of 0.2. The default duration is 0.35, I think, and that's a little too slow for what we want. And the show animation is a spring animation. And you're just gonna to have to trust me on this, but that is a response of 0.3 and a damping fraction of 0.6. And we use those by saying, okay, well, when we're going to toggle the condition, we want to put that in a with animation block. And we're going to use the showing buttons as the ternary condition. And we'll say, if we, sh if we are showing the buttons, the animation we want to run is the one that hides them. So we say it's the hide animation. If we're not showing the buttons, we want to use the animation that shows the buttons which is the spring animation. And we put that inside the block like that. And that should be enough to get things working if we resume that. Look at that. Look at that. We're almost there. Right, two things left to do. The first thing is that that plus sign is not animating as it does in the original and the sheet upon which the buttons are placed is also not animating. We can fix the first problem very easily. Actually, we can fix both problems easily. I'm just gonna start with the add button. So, the add button needs to rotate. We're going to do that with a lovely conditional modifier like this. Rotate if showing the buttons we rotate it minus 45 degrees. How nicely does that read? We're rotating it if we're showing the buttons minus 45 degrees. My goodness. And look, it's already working. All right, that's that job done. The next thing we need to do is animate the opacity of that black sheet. Now there's something I wanna say about this. The temptation at this point would be to do it like this. It would be to drive the opacity with a ternary right in there. 
Are we showing the buttons? If yes, we want the opacity to be that. If not, we want the opacity to be zero. And that would work. Okay? That would work. It does work. But what's wrong here? Why am I belly aching about this? Why am I even talking about this? The reason I'm talking about this is that there are two things going on here. There are two aspects to what we've just done on line 22. Because there's behavior and there's design, and they are both intermingled. It's very easy to say that 0.8, which is part of the design, is now lost in the behavior. And you don't have the separation of concerns that you can achieve. So let's go back to what we had before. Okay. How should we do it? In my opinion, again, how should we do it? Well, since that's the design, I actually want to animate the opacity of that entire thing, including the opacity that we've got defined there. And I would do it like this. I would use a conditional modifier. If we're not showing the buttons, opacity, if not showing the buttons, is zero. That is the design. And that is the behavior. Nicely separated the way they should be. So here we have it. That works. Brilliant. Now, okay, okay. There is one thing. There is one thing. It looks like the animation that is actually animating here is taking on the spring animation of the buttons. And really, we want that easing in regardless of whether the buttons are flying around or not. We want the black sheet to be easing in. Uh, so I think we need to define a default animation for this. And we're going to say that default animation is the same as the hide animation. And then we're going to assign that to the hide animation. And then what we're going to do is override the explicit animation that we've got in this animation block down here. And we're going to add an implicit animation, which is the default animation. And let's just resume. And I think this is going to look a lot better. There we are. We don't get that springiness to the um, to the black sheets coming in. And the only thing left to do is to get rid of this, uncomment this, and move it up. And there we are. Now, you might think we're done, and we are, okay, but that's not working. Look at that. It does not work in the internal simulator. <laughs> Don't blame me. I only work here. I, I don't actually work here, but, um, well, I am at least here. So do you want to see it in the actual simulator or the external simulator? Let's have a look. There it is. Now, we do actually want the buttons to disappear when they go behind the add button. So we want to reduce the opacity of those buttons to zero when they are not showing. So I want to say... Opacity, if not showing the buttons, again, another lovely conditional modifier. And we'll set the opacity to zero. Simple as that. So now if we run it, I don't know how much it shows up on the screen recording, but that looks better to me. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that's it. So there you have it. A fairly authentic recreation of the animations from MyFitnessPal and a relatively small amount of code that's easy to read. And isn't that the best kind of code? Code you can read. If you want to see how Pure Swift UI can improve your life, give it a try. The link is in the description below. It's totally free. You can download it, browse the source, rip bits out, stick it in your own project, whatever you like, but have fun. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them below. But in the meantime, thanks for joining me. See you next time.